Hello everyone, this is uh, Naishad Gadani coming to you from uh, Melbourne. And it started with a sunny day, but now it's been overcast. You know, we, I think it's going to be raining also. So, you know, it, it you know, we started with a lot of optimism. I think the optimism is uh, <laughs> probably, uh, you know, you know, I think people, uh, the God had different plans. But nonetheless, we are still going to make your afternoon or evening or morning optimistic. Because, um, you know, we are going to talk about something that we haven't spoken or haven't discussed at least on this forum, at least on this platform, since the time we started. And we are going to empower you and talk to you about a tool that you don't even know that exists that can help you to find a job or even build your brand. Um, you know, it's a fantastic, uh, you know, uh, opportunity for you to learn something that you, you may not have sort of understood. Uh, but before that, uh, so... Please make sure that you follow. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, marketing gimmick here. Uh, please follow our um, hashtag career care package. We have got 22 followers so far, mm -hmm. and we want it to <laughs> we want it to be at least you know 50, 100 by the end of the week. But just continue to support our work because we know we have been receiving some really positive and heartwarming messages from people who are listening and people who are you know you know feel supported in this time so feel free to go like uh, you know follow the the hashtag that will give uh, us a great boost and also inflate our egos as well <laughs> um you know but before i start to to talk about the topic let me welcome caroline brown Thanks, Nash. Yes, the uh, globally trending hashtag career care package. You heard about it first here. So, <laughs> no, if you can, it, it means that you can follow past episodes. You can see what's coming up. You can see what we're up to. You can follow people like Jacob. Um, so it's a, a great little resource. So it's funny that you mentioned Twitter and um, how used it is or not. It, I met Jacob over Twitter. And I met a whole bunch of other wonderful people over, over Twitter over the years as well. I haven't used it of late, um, but as I was kind of looking about what we were going to talk about, I'm like, oh, Twitter, oh, what's he up to and what's he up to? So you can get really uh, sucked into, into the tool in a good way. Um, the topic for today is how to find a job using Twitter. And we've got Jacob Sher from JobMob um, from across the, across the globe from Israel to talk about it. Jacob's the founder of JobMob, a wonderful resource for looking for a job. He's all over Twitter. I was following your, your feed today, Jacob, um, as well. So, um, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to put um, Jacob on the uh, interview IQ, uh, not interview IQ, career, career care page spotlight and grill him about Twitter. So thanks for joining us today, Jacob. It's fantastic to, to have you here. It's a pleasure to be back, Nation Caroline. I, I, it's something that I really enjoy talking about. Um, people, as Nation was saying, it's underused, uh, as hard as that's to imagine, perhaps, but it really is underused by job seekers uh, to find mm -hmm. a job. And so, yeah, it's a really interesting topic for sure. And it's funny because um, some, pe some people in the career space and recruitment space and HR space are more on Twitter than they are on mm -hmm. LinkedIn. And I, I was the same for many years. But yeah. so, how long, maybe we'll start with like how long you've personally been using Twitter and, and what you've used it for um, over the years is probably a good place for us to start, I think. Oh, I, um, so I've been on Twitter since close to the beginning. Uh, I, can, I don't remember exactly if it was 2007 or 2008, but it, it's definitely way back then. And initially, uh, which was, that was around the time that I, I started Job Mom, it was about a year or so afterwards. And so initially, just like other people at the time, uh, people didn't know how to use it. It was 140 characters. What can you do with that short, small space? Uh, people were sharing everything and anything under the sun. Uh, it didn't make too much sense at the beginning, but people were feeling it out and that was completely fine. Uh, mm. But over a little bit of time, it started to be clear some of the interesting aspects of it. Uh, the 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 constraint of the 140 characters actually made people think a little bit of more, th think a little more about what they were going to put into that space if they had something to say uh, mm. for some people. And so uh, <laughs> it, it definitely uh, became an opportunity. And so uh, around 2008, I started thinking about writing an ebook about it. I decided I wanted to be the first one to do to write an ebook about Twitter for job search. 
And I started working on it. And, and then just as I was about to put it out there, someone else put one out there. And so I wasn't first, but I was, I was just right, came right after. And over the years, I've, I've evolved it. It's called the Ultimate Twitter Job Search Guide. So, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of uh, interesting things to talk about. Yeah. So what is in the Ultimate Twitter Job Search Guide? Well, we we can... I mean, we could spend the entire hour just talking about that. <laughs> but, but basically, the it's funny because um, Twitter has evolved over the years, for sure. Mm-hmm. But at its core, it hasn't really changed. It really is the same platform. Uh, yes, the messages have been able to get a bit longer. And perhaps a link used to be counted for 140 characters. Now, it isn't, those are all details. Basically, the main aspects of it are the same. It's still about short messages and reaching out to people just like any other kind of networking platform. Mm. Um, and the crux of building your brand on Twitter is the same thing as any other platform, which is that if you provide value to other people, they will provide value back to you. And that's how you build relationships. And so uh, with this network, it just so happens that it's with short messages and links. And now you have polls. Uh, and you have videos now, which you didn't have back in the beginning, and you have live streams as well, and that wasn't there back in the beginning. But again, those those are just details. Those are just little little tactics, uh, techniques that you can use. Uh, the strategy is ultimately the same: provide mm-hmm. value, and it will come back to you uh, in, in terms of reciprocity. And so, mm-hmm. in the ultimate Twitter job search guide, uh, I um, I state the case. I give people examples for how it's possible to be done in terms of finding a job and mm-hmm. growing your brand. It's all related. And, and then I give some techniques, some specific techniques about how to use it as a tool on a daily basis, uh, on a weekly basis, uh, without overcomplicating things. You don't want to make it overcomplicated, let people get started slowly. And it doesn't have to be something you spend an hour in, uh, or hours on, on uh, every day doing, just a few minutes, like any network uh, that matters mm. to you, and, uh, and you go forth from there. Mm. What about for people who want to get started? I mean, you've got the Twitter Twitter bio and the Twitter background, mm-hmm. which are great branding tools. Do you, should you have yeah. sort of what you're looking for in that and maybe a link to your LinkedIn profile or is there any sort of best practice tips um, for that area of Twitter? Yeah, sure. And so uh, this is... a one of the uh, basics that I talk about in the book is how to set up your profile when you get started, how to set mm. up a profile that's like a resume or like a LinkedIn profile. It's something that's impressive when people see it, or at least it doesn't put up a, a negative light on you at, at the very least. I mean, some people mm. will just go, it used to be that when you started with Twitter, people didn't even think about it. They just had the default profile and the avatar was a picture of an egg. Uh, <laughs> Twitter had this whole thing with the bird, right? And the tweets and the birds and all that. So it was all part of the metaphor. Um, but, uh, but now people understand, no, no, we're going to, I'll at least upload a picture of some sort to have as an avatar. And so, yeah, you, you, you just like on a, on a LinkedIn profile, for example, you want to have an avatar picture that is a nice picture of you, something that you would put on a resume. If you put images on resumes, for example, uh, a, a portrait photo, preferably one where you're smiling again, we're, this is uh, in terms of someone who's looking for a job. Uh, so there are certain best practices which apply to most people, but in certain specific cases, there are specific examples that are better. So for example, uh, if you're looking for something in the music industry, well, then maybe a smiling picture with a wearing a tie would not be the most appropriate thing. Maybe you would mm-hmm. want something, a concert in action photo, something like that. But in general, for professionals anyway, uh, you typically would want a positive, a, a grin or a smile, uh, um, shoulders up, clean look. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, mostly filling up the, the picture, not too small, so we can barely see your face. 80% of the picture should be your face or your head, mm-hmm. rather. Uh, and so that's for the image. And then you want to have, you can choose a, an image on the profile, something that represents you. Now, if you have a logo, if you have a personal logo, you can put that. It can also be a, probably the simplest thing is to put an action, sh- an action sh- um, shot or an action photo of yourself doing whatever it is you do. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're a... If you're someone who ever presents on stage, it could be a picture of you on stage. If, it, if you're someone who works in an office, that's fine too. It could be a picture of you in discussion with people or, or maybe you're being presented with an award or some more promotion. Something that, like again, puts you in a good light. Uh, mm. that, uh, typically, if it's an image that you would have shared on your LinkedIn profile, then as well, that would be a good fit for a professional-looking uh, profile on Twitter. Uh, mm. In terms of a... Of a a new URL, you're allowed to include one URL. If you have a, a, a professional website or a personal website where you talk about your professional expertise, then that would be a good choice. Otherwise, your LinkedIn profile or your online resume, if you have one, uh, is mm-hmm. the way to go. Uh, 
Um, in terms of uh, the content, so that's that's really where things can get a little bit stickier mm. because someone who comes to your profile, they're going to see your most recent tweets. They're also going to see some of your the most recent uh, image uploads that you've done. And so uh, you 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 want to be careful, just like on any. I think this is the best practice for any social network. You don't want to if you're trying to use it for professional reasons, then you, you want to be careful what you're posting there. Nothing, again, that will put you in a negative light. Uh, and so if you're uploading images uh, that may not be relevant, it's okay. I mean, if you're using, just like on LinkedIn, you, you, you don't usually have a professional profile and a personal profile. Uh, mm -hmm. On Twitter, it is possible to have multiple accounts, much more so than on LinkedIn. And I do recommend that actually. But if you haven't thought of that at this point, uh, and you decide to just pivot your personal account to become more of a professional account. So you don't have to worry about taking off everything or, or, or hiding everything. It's okay to have some images that are friendly, uh, friend related or family related, or I don't know, pictures of things that you did, you liked, whatever. That's okay. Uh, again, as long as it's nothing that will put you in a negative light, that's fine. Uh, but you're definitely going to want to spend more time putting, uh, posting content or uploading images that are related to your work so that people get the impression, oh, okay, this is someone who really does back up what they say. They know uh, what they are um, mm -hmm. in terms of an expert. And, uh, and of course, one thing I shouldn't forget, of course, which is the all important tagline, uh, similar again to on LinkedIn, you have a, a headline that you can include under your name. So again, you're going to want to have a few words that are, it's very, I mean, this is an elevator pitch of an elevator pitch, basically, right? You can really, really... <laughs> You only have a few words that you can say there. And so, yeah, you're going to want to uh, tag yourself uh, uh, based on your expertise or based on a recent achievement. Uh, um, and so, yeah, there's a lot we can talk about as, in terms yeah. of that as well. It's a, I feel that, uh, you know, I feel that, you know, sometimes like a, like Twitter is a, is a perfect kind of, a, you know, cocktail of LinkedIn and Facebook both because you mm -hmm. can be professional Yet, Twitter is an opportunity for you to also be vocal about your social, political, business opinions. Yeah. Uh, that's how I have seen Twitter as. You know, I don't have a huge following, but I, I use Twitter to, to acquire information and also to, to like and uh, sort of post things that I feel are more, uh, more inclined to my personal beliefs and social justice and my political beliefs and everything. So I, I kind of use it that way. I've not, you know, uh, use it for purely for the business reasons. Yeah. But but I think that's what I said, because, you know, a lot of the lot of the Twitter bios that we see is a combination of personal and professional things, you know, and I really look at a lot of different bios of people and I find it. Yeah. So fascinating. People have, you know, from a, you know, from aficionado of chicken tandoori to somebody who's, you know, uh, you know, um, Can't love you know bucket list is <laughs> bucket list is you know walk on the moon or something. You know, so I think I think it is really a really great way in my view to to really have your personal beliefs, personal identity, and also professional identity kind of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mixed together. What are your thoughts on kind of putting in that personal touch to that? Because yeah. Facebook is still too personal. Twitter is kind of in yeah. between. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually agree with what you said, that there's there's an expectation. People have a, a um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a stereotype, but basically when you come to a different platform, each platform has its own uh, perception. So, for example, like you said, we know that LinkedIn is considered the professional's platform. That's where business is done, right? And Facebook, even though there's a lot of business that goes on on Facebook, uh, it's considered to be the personal platform. That's where people share with their friends and family. That's how it started, right? And, and people, uh, Facebook has tried to get people away from that. But that's, that's really what people assume, associate with Facebook. And it's true that Twitter, Twitter at the beginning was more like Facebook in that sense, that people were just sharing everything and anything. But it really has, over time, become a mix. I mean, nowadays... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's become a major communications channel for PR. Uh, we see <laughs> presidents tweeting all the time. We see mm. companies putting out official statements via Twitter before they do business um, uh, news associations or news organizations. So it really has uh, gained a professional level of uh, a professional standard, I guess you could say, that wasn't there back in the beginning. And it's true that as a result, there's that combination. And so um, when you're a recruiter and you're coming to these different platforms, 
Uh, and also there's Instagram, which also has a different perception as well uh, because of the photography and now the video, et cetera. And so it's true that you you want to, you, on the one hand, you, you, you have that expectation and you have to keep it in mind so you can get away with including a mix of things that you wouldn't necessarily do on LinkedIn, for example. There are definitely things you would post on Twitter that you would not post on LinkedIn uh, in terms of best practices. I mean, people can post wherever they want, whatever they want, but in terms of best mm -hmm. practices, there's stuff you wouldn't post on, uh, on LinkedIn that you can post on Twitter, it's fine. And like you said, people will come to your profile and they're not expecting to only hear about your job or your expertise. They are expecting a mix of things. And so if they see it, they're not going to be surprised by that. And you're not going to lose any points, I guess you could mm -hmm. say, for that. Um, it depends on the mix, again, and it, and it depends on what exactly you're posting. And as we've seen more examples of recently, although it's always been the case, um, if someone doesn't like opinions that you posted, which is, of course, they're right. I mean, who knows? Everybody's different. Uh, mm -hmm. Then that might hurt you. But you can't, you can't make everybody happy, and you shouldn't try to please everybody. Uh, if you're looking for a job specifically, it's about finding the best fit and understanding who uh, you should be trying to please and who should be trying to please you as well, because a fit, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, I do like ultimately what you just said. And it's about finding that, that, uh, that middle ground of what's the best formula for you? What's the best combination? What's your voice, basically? Uh, mm -hmm. What's a good fit? Um, so um, I know, for example, when, when, when I hear a lot, one of the most frustrating things for older job seekers is ageism, right? This, mm -hmm. uh, this discrimination against, I mean, ageism doesn't specifically mean against older job seekers, although that's what pe people typically associate with that. Ageism could also be against younger job seekers, but mm -hmm. um, the perception usually is older job seekers. And um, one of the facts, statistically, it has been proven is that uh, you might be the most qualified person for the job that has been interviewed for the job, but for whatever reason, the people who are interviewing may be younger and they may feel a better chemistry with someone who's closer to their age. And it's mm -hmm. not fair. Uh, it's not necessarily legal. I, I don't see why, but it's not fair. Uh, but that's just reality. And so uh, that fit, part of it is going to be looking on people's social media profiles and seeing, you know what, this seems like a cool person or this doesn't seem like a cool person. And what one person considers cool will be different than what somebody else considers cool. And so mm -hmm. uh, I actually think that you should be having a mix of professional and personal on Twitter as a filter, because mm. if someone is going to be looking at your profile to decide if you are cool for them or a, a potential good fit, well, then hopefully they'll like what you have there. And if they do like what you've been posting there, you're more likely to, to enjoy working with them because they'll have mm. liked things that you do. So you won't have to be constantly saying, not hiding things, but let's say pushing it to the background type of thing. Mm. Is there a certain type of, because I, I guess, you know, when I was started on Twitter, I was working with some recruitment agencies trying to get them on Twitter and you know, they're like, well, well, there's no job seekers on Twitter. And um, I, I would have the conversation, but there are influencers on Twitter. You know, a lot of people that want to be engaged in things are actually yeah. on Twitter for like a political discussion or for tweeting on a topic or what they're volunteering in or they're just more... Uh, engaged in public de debate in some way, mm -hmm. but have you observed any sort of type of stereotype of person on or type of person that uses Twitter? Is that um, would it be fair to say that you know people that tend to use it tend to want to be more active in say their professional community or their community in, in general? Do you think? You're right. Um, well, I would say there's. It's funny. We, we talk about how people don't usually check their LinkedIn messages, right? Mm -hmm. Well, on Twitter, it must be times 10. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I find that either either you love it or you don't see the purpose. And so mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you'll you see a lot of people who dabbled in it and then they just said, well, this is a waste of time and they, they never came back to it. And so their mm -hmm. profiles haven't been updated for years. And then you'll see people who are very active on it, who really do see value and they, they find it easier to spend a few minutes on every day uh, than going on to LinkedIn, for example, which I, I you'll see people hardcore uh, and usually they have a vested interest like recruiters uh, or marketers um, or business developers, but then you'll have people who are, let's say programmers or accountants uh, or other kinds of professionals who don't see a lot of reason to hang out on LinkedIn unless they're looking for a job. Mm -hmm. But on Twitter, they may be involved with communities or they may have friends uh, in their um, industry who, who are posting things, like you said, influencers that they follow. And so mm -hmm. just to check 
uh, or interact with them. And that really is a key word here. And that's something that I want to come back to in a second. Uh, then that's that's a reason for them to, 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 to get on it every day or just to keep it uh, on their phone uh, at mm. least so they can jump in there from time to time. Uh, I don't see people spending hours on Twitter. Like I don't see, I mean, aside from some very specific cases, you don't see the average person spending an hour on Twitter. That's just not the way people use it. Uh, mm. they're, they're gonna, they maybe check if they, if they had any messages, but even that usually you, you don't see too often people using it as a messaging platform, uh, not mm. like email. Uh, it really is to, to just check your feed, check to see who you're following, uh, whether it's news organizations, people use it a lot to find up news headlines for sure. Um, mm. again, some communities that you're following, uh, Twitter years ago, uh, created this, this lists functionality, which is supposed to make it easier to jump into Twitter for a specific topic or group of people to follow uh, for a specific moment in time. Uh, mm. I really find it completely underused. Uh, I think it's a really, really useful, it can be a really useful tool, let's put it that way. And I, and I, I spend a lot of time talking about it in my, in my ebook. Uh, but I find that most people don't, don't know about them. They, they don't use them. Uh, mm. They just have one list, which is who they follow. That's it. Mm. Uh, I either follow people I care about or I don't. Um, mm. And the only person who's going to follow far and wide uh, are, are, again, similar to LinkedIn lions, people who just want to be networking with as many people as possible. They'll just follow mm -hmm. away. But the average person, no, they're not going to be doing that. And so for job seekers specifically, it, it's understandable if you had been using it for personal reasons, you'd be following some friends. Uh, but you're probably following, again, some news organizations, uh, perhaps some companies that you like uh, and, and so forth. But when it comes to job search, you really need to be a little bit more directed than that. And so you really should be looking at following uh, influencers in your industry if you're not already to, to be up to speed on what's trending in the industry. Um, mm. uh, you should be following companies that you are researching or want to learn more about as potential places to apply. Um, and, and you should also be hopefully following some career coaches to, to learn about how to improve your, your job search uh, mm. techniques. There's no question about that. And so... Uh, I, I, I do recommend creating what's called a, what I call a VIP list mm -hmm. uh, of people. So if, if you want to go into Twitter specifically for job search purposes, well, then you'll just go and, and look at that list of the things I just mentioned. And so mm -hmm. you, can, you can stay focused. But again, most people are not going to bother with that. But at least they should intermingle uh, um, their, their overall follow list of who mm -hmm. they're following with those three uh, things specifically. And just coming back to what you men mentioned, sort of interaction, this is really one of the, the best things about Twitter, mm. and they're about to kill it. <laughs> so yeah, it really is a good time. We want to here, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the idea is that, um, I mean, it used to be, I remember when I was little and I was in love with sports more than I am today, um, the idea of meeting a professional sports uh, athlete was just so pie in the sky. It was something that never happened. Maybe if you were at a convention or something, you could get them to sign an autograph or something. It almost never happened. Uh, mm. Once Twitter came along, you could tweet it at professionals <laughs> and they would respond. And I know. It, really, it was crazy. And, and it, yeah. it made them seem like real people, <laughs> actual yeah. real people who have thoughts and, and, and likes <laughs> and dislikes just like anybody else. It's mind numbing, right? Uh, and so until recently, and you still can, you still can, there's no question about it. It was obviously a lot easier back in the day at the beginning when, when, when they were not being overwhelmed by spam and people asking them for help or whatever, whatever selling things to them. But now, recently, Twitter did introduce a function which allows you to mute um, uh, specific people. That's actually going back a few years. But not only that, you can actually, the opposite, where you can say, I only want to hear from certain people. And so um, basically, they, they put up, they allow them to put up a, a kind of a virtual gatekeeper. Uh, yeah. Although, like with Twitter lists, most people don't know about this yet. And so they're not right. using it. And so you still can uh, tweet at all um, famous people and people who normally would be out of reach, uh, just I would be judicious and not uh, not spam anybody. Of course, you're not going to get any any anything good out of that. Yeah, yeah. I've had some fun with Twitter over the years. With um, you know, I was with a bunch of girlfriends and we wanted to get an up to date horoscope, so we tweeted the the guy <laughs> Horex, Jonathan Kainer at the time. He's dead now, unfortunately. But it's like, come on, Jonathan, what's happening in the world? We don't want to know where Mars is and Mercury. And it's like, yes, he replied. So. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. And it was always surprising. Yeah. It's like, oh, my gosh. I didn't actually <laughs> expect that they were listening. <laughs> but it's, but it's, it's interesting. I mean, just like with a blog, yeah, you take, I tell you people. Take me. Sorry, Nate? No, I, I was just going to say that with, with a blog, even today, influencers, uh, if you go to an influencer's blog and you actually write a comment, which people don't do anymore, 
They're, mm. they're reading those comments. They really, really are. And it really, today, that's my go-to way of getting in touch with somebody is, is a blog comment. Uh, you yeah. can still tweet at someone. It's much better than emailing them, that's for sure. Uh, but again, uh, they're, they're now people are much more likely, influencers and famous people are much more likely to be overwhelmed uh, yeah. if they're even reading their tweets. Although we have proof that some of them still are. They respond. Yeah. They still are. Yeah. Mm. Uh, because last week I think I read a uh, read a blog a tweet from someone in India about a career reinvention story of somebody who changed a career from a human resource from human resource or investment banking to becoming a uh, you know a stand up comic. Yeah, and I found that because really they're so related. <laughs> So I found it very fascinating. So I just I read the read it. I, I you know checked out his uh, you know YouTube channel. I found it so fascinating. I just tweeted it to him. That look, this is what we do. Me and interview IQ do this. It would be fun to to get you and talk about your career reinvention story. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Two days later, I was talking to him, and he agreed to come on on our show. Uh, you know, very soon to to talk cool. about his career reinvention story. Now. That in in my view, that I've you know during COVID nineteen, I've tweeted to to many people to come on our show uh, because because they I I and that's what I found that in LinkedIn um, in some some context some professional they would be flooded with requests and they would sure. be flooded with you know messages and connection requests. So I I think I find more uh, you know sort of you know they'll they'll be more inclined to. Uh, to sort of respond to a tweet straight away, yes and no, rather than yeah. reading the whole bunch of messages, you know, and then finding out that whether you want to be part of that or not. So right. my question is around, you know, because, the, you know, obviously we've been using a lot of lingos and not many people are aware of those, yeah. uh, you know, tweet lingos. So can you explain a few lingos that we have been using, such as tweet, follow, hashtag, and things like that? Uh, you know, so that people can understand that how do they really kickstart this? Right. Okay. Yeah. So let's go back to basics. Uh, and so <clears throat> the way Twitter works is you create an account. Uh, when you create an account, as we mentioned back in the beginning, you're able to create a profile just like on any social media platform. You have a profile. It's your your personal page that's associated with your username. Uh, uh, if you if you are starting a new account as part of your job search. Try to use a create you choose a username that's as close as possible to your real name, um, ideally without underscores and hyphens that that people won't think to put into there. Uh, but if you can't get it, then I would recommend something that is you want to be known for. In other words, if you are an accountant, then you could be um, Melbourne accountant or or top Melbourne accountant or something like that. Uh, but ideally, you'll hopefully be able to get your name unless you have a really, really common name uh, like Jim Smith or something like that. And once you have a profile set up, uh, I'm not going to repeat the stuff that we mentioned earlier, but once you have a profile set up, well, then, so what actually is Twitter? Well, with Twitter, uh, just like on any social media network, you have some sort of content that you post uh, for whatever reason. And so uh, on Twitter specifically, the the well-known thing is that you're limited to messages of 140 characters. And, and those are, it used to be that it had, it could be, uh, it, it was 140 characters, including a link. Whereas now if you, they made it easier. So you can, if you want to link to something, they won't count that in the 140 characters. So it's still, that's not a lot of space. We're talking about a few lines to say something, right? Uh, you can attach an image to your, your, uh, your tweets. You can, uh, or you can, post an image, you can post a video of something, you can go live uh, if you just feel like talking about something uh, and, and streaming it live from your phone or from your computer. But the idea is that you are going to be sharing things. And so uh, it could be anything under the sun. As we saw, we see people who, who share pictures like on Instagram of what they're eating. Uh, but for a job seeker, ideally, you want to be talking about your expertise, that people who come to your profile, they will see things about your expertise. So so what is that? So if you, you could be sharing a, an article uh, that you read uh, or that you think people should read uh, related to your profession or your industry, uh, you could ask a question uh, that you legitimately want people to answer. In fact, nowadays, you can actually create a poll uh, to see how people uh, will 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 we'll respond. Uh, however, a poll is only going to get traction if you have people following you. And so, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you just like you can post content. Well, obviously, other people can co- can post content. But how will you see their content? 
you have to follow them. So it means you have to go to their fo- profile and there's a button that says follow and you have to click follow and then they will be added to your follower list. And so how will you see that information? Well, on your page, uh, so you have your tweets and then there's a different tab, which is your followers. And then you'll see the tweets of anyone that you're following there. So at the beginning, there isn't going to be much there, but as you add more and more followers over time, and hopefully occasionally you unfollow uh, people who you no longer find interesting, uh, then uh, that will be where you get your information, whether it's, again, organizations that you're following, uh, companies that you want to learn more about because you're considering applying to them, uh, influencers, career coaches, and so forth. And so the idea is that you share content and you consume other people's content. And one important thing is the interaction. So how do you interact? Well, just like you chose a username, other people have done the same thing. And when you, in your content, in your tweet, which is just a piece of content you posted, right? A tweet, like a little bird tweet, tweet. Um, <laughs> if you put the at symbol in front of someone's username, they will be notified uh, that you mentioned them. Uh, and that's also something that, that appears in your profile, just like you have your tweets, your followers tweets you also have what are called mentions which is anytime that anyone else has mentioned you by including our at symbol and your name in a tweet and so for example if you want to ask carolyn a question i think carolyn's handle is carolyn is that sorry interview iq right and yeah. so you would say um i saw your recent linkedin live with nash it was awesome um you have fantastic guests like jacob <laughs> um, i think your next guest should be so forth and then they'll put they'll include at interview IQ and then Carolyn will look at her Twitter apparently not in the next few months or something but at some point <laughs> <laughs> hopefully career care package is still going on she'll see that message and she'll say oh okay great um, but actually but that's a good point going back to your what you're just saying Nish is that uh, I would be careful to check if someone is active on Twitter in other words have they posted something have they shared a tweet recently have they tweeted something recently uh, as a way to see if they're actually using Twitter before contacting them on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a, it's important because if, if uh, not everyone is checking, uh, people, like what you were saying, there's just some people who just don't use it anymore or at all. And so if their last tweet was in 2015 or 2009, then sending them a message is unlikely to be to be even seen. So they're not even gonna respond, forget about that. So um, is there any other lingo I haven't covered? Uh, there probably is. Um, no, I think, oh, yes, I think of course. So there is an important thing, which is yeah. that when you when you see a tweet uh, that you like, well, then you can like tweets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now it's it's actually a heart symbol, and so you 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 can heart them. And that actually what that does it's kind of creates like a bookmark. Although people don't usually use it that way. No nobody goes back to check the tweets that they've liked. Uh, it's really just a way of telling the other person, oh, I enjoy what you said, or I empathize uh, with what you said. It's the irony is that it's always been called a like just on Facebook, but sometimes this person is announcing the death of a family member and people are liking mm-hmm. it, which is kind of strange, but that's the way the platform is used. And then there's, of course, the famous or infamous, in some cases, retweet, which just mm-hmm. means that um, someone has posted something, you want that message to be forwarded, and so you click the retweet symbol, which is a pair of arrows now uh, going around in a circle, mm-hmm. well, a rectangle, um, and that just means that you, without doing anything else, you, you kind of vouch for that and you it's almost as if you had copied it and then reposted it on your profile. No, with just one click, it has now been reshared on your profile as if you had posted it. And so all your followers will see that as well. And so, yes, retweets are a very, very big deal. Uh, and what people retweet says a lot about them. And so uh, that's also something to pay attention to on Twitter. Mm. It's an interesting way of really, I mean, building up that relationship that you can then take offline if you want to or, or connect with somebody on, on LinkedIn or send them an email, maybe not direct message yeah. them on Twitter because my DM on Twitter is just full of spam except sure. for a few messages from you. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, that, that you know, like I always go and look to see who's liked my stuff, who's retweeted my stuff um, mm-hmm. as well. And, you know, I, I always appreciate it, particularly if I've not been on Twitter for um, quite a while as well. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. Are people still doing um, Twitter chats? Like, I, I oh, haven't looked. Yeah, is it still big or? Oh, it's not as big as it used to be. So, a Twitter chat, uh, and this brings us to another piece of lingo which I had forgotten about, is yeah. Nate mentioned before hashtag. Okay. Yeah. So, a hashtag, this was actually something that was grassroots. It wasn't something that Twitter invented. Uh, mm. People started doing it on Twitter. Then Twitter said, oh, this is a great idea. And they built it into the platform. And so, the idea was that people wanted a way to tag things. They wanted a way to 
to um, regroup things. And so they started, I don't remember who started it way back in the beginning, but the idea is that if you post something on Twitter, you tweet something and you want people to be able to find it as part of, of a topic. So you would put the hashtag symbol or the pound symbol uh, and then attach it to a word. So for example, if I'm tweeting about uh, a, uh, a resume tip, then I'll put hashtag resumes. And then mm. that way, what you can do, you can use Twitter search to find, to search on hashtag resumes and you'll find all the tweets, recent tweets, top tweets that people have tweeted about with that hashtag, which assuming will be about resumes. It could be resume tips and other kinds of resume related content. And so it's a way of regrouping things. And so um, it's not just in terms of discovering content, it's also a way of discovering people as well. And so uh, you can, for example, right now, of course, Black Lives Matter is a whole movement. And so people who identify with it, they will tweet things and then they'll, they'll include the hashtag Black Lives Matter. And so it's, I mean, there's probably, I mean, we're talking millions of tweets, it's almost lost all purpose anything that gets to that number uh, is almost useless at this point. But again, it's an example of a trend. You'll often be able to see trends. In fact, there are websites that will be able to take a look and tell you about current trends on Twitter by looking mm. at how many things are being hashtagged a certain way. Uh, mm. And that's actually something that could be interesting, at least to glance at, to see what is trending on Twitter. Twitter itself will give you on, in your, uh, on your um, Twitter homepage what's tw trending locally and globally on Twitter mm -hmm. uh, as a, a kind of a starting off point if they if you want to, to get you to, to act on Twitter, if you want if you have something to say about one of the trends, uh, mm -hmm. this is what people are talking about right now type of thing. Uh, and so, uh, because, uh, yeah, I always jump, when I jump on, I'm like, oh, who's that? That's hashtag. In Melbourne, it's usually yeah. AFL footballers, some scandal. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. And so the idea was that people uh, wanted a way to kind of do a group chat. In other words, they, 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 it wasn't mm -hmm. clear. Twitter doesn't have a built-in function for, I mean, the, one of the great things about Twitter, which is, again, like anything, it has a, a flip side, is that it's completely open. It's completely public. Mm -hmm. uh, you can delete tweets, but once it's on the internet, it's out there. Uh, and mm -hmm. most people don't bother. And so you can go back and find tweets from whenever. Uh, and people wanted a way to still kind of group people uh, but in a public fashion. And so he came up with this idea of a chat. And so this is a, it's a hashtag based chat. And so the idea is that uh, it was more popular a few years ago. And in fact, there, there are still a couple of websites where you can find out ongoing chats or upcoming chats. And mm -hmm. the idea is that uh, someone who organizes a chat and they say, okay, at let's say, let's say we're going to have we want people on twi Twitter to to have an, an ongoing live chat while career care package is going on live as well here on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, you say, okay, at the time that we go live, uh, if you use the hashtag career care package, well, then we will be able to see your questions, uh, for example, or your comments live while we are interviewing our guest, in this mm -hmm. case, the fantastic Jacob about Twitter, <laughs> then, uh, and we can respond live because we know, we, we see that we're, we're searching on the hashtag, a hashtag in real time. Uh, and so uh, what can happen as well is that if, if uh, I mean, you got, it, it's hard to do this kind of a, a live uh, tr um, streaming session and manage other platforms at the same time. Uh, if you guys had somebody who was doing that, then that person could be perhaps taking questions that you guys were asking me and then putting them on the chat. And so you would say, okay, um, career care package, or say, career care package, uh, hashtag uh, career care package, and then ask a question, and then whoever's following, they can respond as long as they include the career care package hashtag. You guys will see the responses, and then in, in, integrate that into these uh, into these uh, live sessions. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically what a hashtag chat is. It's just people uh, paying attention to a specific hashtag at a specific moment in time, and mm -hmm. then there's a theme and so forth. But yeah, yeah, it's still a thing. Uh, it's not as popular as it was once upon a time. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I yep. still do see uh, I still do see them uh, taking place. No question about it. It does. It does. We've got a question. I think the question is cool. around, uh, are there any statistics uh, about which regions use Twitter uh, you know, in terms mm. of jobs and everything? Um, I would think that U.S. would top this list. Uh, you know, I don't know about U.K., Australia, but what are yeah. your observations around which country uses this more for so, job search I, and everything? Yeah. yeah, it's a good question, and it's definitely been answered. 
Um, I haven't searched out that information recently. Uh, I know that I think in 2017, 2018, I saw a, an infographic where they're talking about which social media networks were most the top three uh, in each country at the time. Uh, and there's no question that Twitter was top three in a number of countries and America was was one of them. I don't know if that would be true today. There's no question that, that Facebook is still massive. Instagram has become massive. Um, and it's possible that Snapchat has passed Twitter in the States. I'm not sure. It also depends how you measure it. In do you measure it in terms of the number of accounts, uh, active mm -hmm. accounts, the amount of content that's being posted? Uh, so it, it, it depends. But I think that you can definitely find uh, that information if you search. And it's a really good question. It really is because if you are looking for a job in a country or in a, in a region where Twitter isn't uh, a big deal, then should you invest the time? Um, mm -hmm. And exactly. um, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good question to look into. Um, but again, ultimately, it's, it, I, would, I would care much more uh, in terms of the actual direction. So in other words, if there are specific companies, hopefully your, your, your job search is this targeted, this focused, if there are specific companies that you want to apply for or considering, that's who you should care about. Are they on Twitter? Are they yeah. actively on Twitter? Not so much is Twitter popular in Australia uh, exactly. uh, or New South Wales or whatever. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so it, it's, it is important if you, if you are trying to grow your brand, then should you spend time on Twitter uh, in, instead of another social media network? That's something worth, worth considering mm. if it's, whether it's popular or, or not in your region. Uh, but mm. in terms of a job search, uh, it's not as important. You know, yeah. the interesting thing is that it's global too, because I have mm -hmm. been connected, it's really connected up with somebody that I work closely with now, Lois from Career Wisdom. And there was an Australian expat in Japan who connected us to, and she's in Perth in Australia and I'm, I'm yeah. in Melbourne, but we wouldn't have met via that global connection too. So, yeah. um, and I've been referred media from, you know, the States. <laughs> yeah. Somebody in Australia referred to the States, referred back back here as well. So, yeah, um, yeah it is globally, it's a global um, yeah. audience. That there's, you there's something yeah. important about Twitter uh, that that lowers the the borders, I guess you could say, mm. which is that um, when someone sees a tweet, uh, they don't necessarily pay attention if it's even there uh, to geographically where it's coming mm. from. They just see a name, uh, they see an avatar, they see the content, and of course, it could be anywhere in the world. And whereas, if you're on Facebook, you're more likely to see some sort of a geographic uh, piece mm. of content. Uh, if it's a website, you'll see the URL. Uh, I people see my URL is c o i l. It's not a .com. It's not a mm. .org. It's not a .net. And so they know right away. Oh, this is not U.S. based, uh, mm. for example. And so some people will care about that, and they won't interact as much. Uh, mm. Or if they see a, a, an AU at the end, then or, or or an IN, uh, then they're like, oh, okay, this this is less for me. But mm. on Twitter, you have much less of that happening. And so mm. often, it's only after the fact that people realize, oh, we're not even in the same country. Mm. And at that point, they don't even care anymore because they've already <laughs> gotten, it's true, they've already yeah. gotten value out of it. Uh, and, and so the filter, uh, they, sorry, the, rather the bridge was already was already built. Mm. And so what does it matter at this point where you are physically? If anything, at that point, they're like, oh, it's kind of cool that you're, you're in Australia and I'm in Israel and you're in India mm. and you're in Japan or whatever. Uh, and it's true. It really is a great way to, to, to build a global network in that sense. Mm. You're much... Again, the, the barrier is much lower. It's, it's the, there are less obstacles to creating a global network, which is why, on the one hand, I somehow it's hard to say, but it, it, it is misused or underused rather uh, by business people. Uh, for mm. that point, people jump to LinkedIn right away, and again, completely understandable. And I would I would definitely recommend being on LinkedIn for that purpose. But again, if if the people you're trying to reach out to are also on Twitter internationally, then there's a much better chance that they're going to respond. Uh, mm. and they won't care so much about the fact that you're in different countries. Yeah, it's interesting because I remember when I first jumped on Twitter recruiting Animal, I think everybody knows him in the recruitment yeah. world, said, oh, career coach from Melbourne. I'm like, and he's in Canada. So, you know, how yeah. did he pick Toronto. Yeah. But yeah, so, yeah, it's a funny guy. All right, so I yeah. think that's uh, pretty much it uh, for today. We are coming to an that's end. It? The last oh. thing, that's <laughs> it, right? Well, the really again. sensational. <laughs> Last thing that I can I can t you know tell everyone, which I you know whenever I do a session on on personal branding, what I do is I take a snapshot. I go to 
go to Twitter and put in hashtag jobs, hashtag Melbourne, hashtag career or hashtag, yeah. you know, AI or something, right? And I will yeah. invariably come across with 20 to 30 tweets, which talks mm -hmm. about those jobs. Now, they may not be, sometimes the, the, the tweets were two years old, so they are redundant. But right. what I what I come to know is that who is talking about these things, right? Because I, I still feel, you know, if I keep, keep the Australian context um, in this discussion, that, you know, being, uh, you know, very few compared to US or India, you know, we are still, uh, you know, less amount of people on Twitter, you've got less traffic. I think your your opportunity to be noticed by somebody would be much higher rather yeah. than, you know, sending out a tweet to, a, you know, company in Cisco, Cisco in US, you'd probably not get anywhere. But I think if you if you reach out to a company at startup anywhere else in, in Australia, I think you'd your tweet will be read by a human. And, mm -hmm. you know, they are, and if it is interesting, I think people do respond to that because Twitter, as I said, you know, as in my view, is still a cocktail of Facebook and LinkedIn. You can be a little informal, you can show yeah. your personality, and that's what the, and that's what the social media managers who manage the Twitter accounts, they also kind of like those kind of tweets. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know, so, yeah. It, it's, uh, <clears throat> it, it's, it's true. I mean, um, you, you want to be careful, um, again, in terms of it, we said as earlier that it's it's good to have a, a good a good mix, just like you say. It's a cocktail of the Facebook and the LinkedIn. It, it, it is important to have a good mix that represents you, that that shows who you are, that's representative, that's authentic uh, about who you are, and yeah, to give people a chance to get to know you a bit. Yeah. And the other thing too, I guess, you know, people like us are putting content out on LinkedIn Live. Mm -hmm. There's lots of platforms and forums, so we go looking for people that actually have some personality that look like a human being that yeah. have a, a viewpoint and platforms like Twitter are where you can put that out and give people something mm. to connect to as well. So um, you're not your job description, you're a whole cocktail, using that word again, of, of different things as well. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the end, isn't it? It's that's it. Coming up to Oh, that's such a pity. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fantastic. All good things come to an end. Yeah. So, yeah, they do. But um, <laughs> so your Twitter book, find a job on Twitter. That's we'll put a link into that um into the comments as well for people cool. to have you. You've updated it recently, have you? Or I updated it. I think the last time was in two thousand nineteen. Okay, yeah. that's, that's recent enough. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we'll put a link to that. You can follow Jacob at your job mob on Twitter, aren't you? Or Jacob? No, Share? it's actually Jacob Share, J A C O B S H A R E, just my name. Yeah. Yep. No, just someone else managed to get job mob. They uh, they don't use it very much, but someone else got it. <sighs> Somebody left yeah. interview IQ as well. So. It's anyway. Way. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <way>. <laughs> um, and yeah, so tomorrow we are talking.